But it gives me great pleasure, first of all, to welcome a man who has really enchanted the racing world with his uh, warmth of personality and his great talent in the saddle through 2021. Not just that, yesterday he was crowned champion apprentice, receiving his trophy from none other than Lester Piggott after racking up 51 winners during the course of the year. He is not the first Sardinian riding sensation we've had the pleasure to enjoy and as such he's invited natural comparisons with the great Frankie de Tori. He is uh, of course Marco Gianni. Marco, welcome to the show and thanks so much for joining me. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure. Everyone has seen that um, that beautiful warm smile during the course of the of the season, the last couple of years. Are you enjoying it and enjoying life as much as it appears? I am, yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. It's been a great year, and I achieve a lot. So, it's no point not not to smile. Have you always been like that? Were you like that as a as a boy? I think so. Maybe not when I was working in the restaurant, but when I was on my ponies, I probably was, yeah. So take, take me right back. Is, is riding ponies the first thing you can, you can really remember? How, how young were you when you first started riding? So I sat on a horse when I was four for a few months, and then I got an operation, and mum didn't want, didn't want me to ride anymore. So I was just you know, doing some athletes and swimming. And then when I was 11, I just, I just said, oh, I'm just going. I don't care what you're saying, I just want to go. Uh, so they sent me there, and you know, I was doing the Sartilia thing. Um, just, just explain, for those who aren't familiar what the Sartilia is, it's the, well, the Sartilietta is for the younger riders, isn't it? Is uh, that right? The Sartilia is for the old people, and yeah. the Sartilietta is for the young rider. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was doing the leading joke in the 2015, and when I was galloping, I, they, there was so much rain that the sun was gone on from the track, so there was just a tray underneath, and I, and I just took it, and I just, you know, just flip over. Um, and Dario Vargio, that was six-time champion joke in Italy at that time, he saw it, and he messaged me. So I just started looking into him, and I thought, oh, there is horse racing everywhere in the world. And so just take me back, so just explain, what, what is the Satilliette? Is it like pony racing? So you need to try to catch a star hanging on um, ah. on the road. So it's a bit like sort of Jim Carner games, like that kind of thing. Yeah, but you go swore and you gallop flat out and you have to try to catch this star with a hole this big. Oh my word. Um, yeah. So and it's a good luck if you take it. So you need to be um, you need to be sort of well balanced. Snapper. <laughs> brave. Yeah. And a sniper. <laughs> and a sniper. Yeah. Yeah. So you were all of those things. Well, I wasn't that very. I wasn't very good at it, but I took only four or five in my career over there. <laughs> but Dario Vargi, who's a a bit of a legend in Italy, yeah, a brilliant rider. He obviously saw something in you. He saw yeah. some talent there. Yeah, because when I fell off, you know, I stand up, and obviously I chase my horse, and I and I catch it, and I jump back on it, and I just went. I just went up and. Did it again, this, exactly the same. And you probably just say, oh, probably a bit, you know, brave, but also nuts. And, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and I just started looking into him. And I thought there was horse racing and not just palios. And I thought, I might just, you know, maybe I can try and have a go. Um, and it worked out well. Do you think, had you not had the contact with Dario, that in fact you'd now be riding the palio rather than riding in races at Newmarket? I didn't really, like, want to do the Palio. I thought it was a bit dangerous, but with the saddle, I thought I can, you know, I can have a go. But if it wasn't for him, I probably just didn't know the exist of this country and, and racing, you know. Did it, did it feel very easy for you riding thoroughbreds, having done what you'd done, which sounded incredibly difficult, dangerous, requiring balance and bravery and all that. Did you find it then quite easy when you were riding riding the, the racehorses? I always like, you know, ride horses and especially the tricky one. I find it funny, so, you know, it's just, I feel like it's a game and I'm enjoying it. So, whereas a lot of people might be a bit wary or nervous of 
the really difficult horses. You actually say, go on, put me on the ones that no one else can ride. Yeah. And I'd be like, come on, let's see how long I can stay on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a, I quite like it. So tell me about your, your first trip to, to England and what you remember about it. It was April, no, it was October 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and I came for the open day at the British Racing School. And it took us, you know, around the school and in the yards and they show us, you know, everything. And that where I applied for come at the racing school. But obviously I couldn't understand the word. I just understand few and, you know, I just tried to catch whatever they said, but it wasn't easy. Yeah, so I applied and then the April of the next year, I just came and did the fitness test and yeah, like the interview and they gave me a space on the course in December. And then I came back and I just stay here. Now, am I right in thinking that there's only two people who's, who've ever scored 100% on the fitness, on the feared fitness test at the BRS. One of them's Tom Markwind and the other one is you. Yeah, that's the one. So you found that pretty easy as well. Well, it was hard. I was blowing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's definitely hard, you know, to get ready for that type of exams. But I always like, you know, run and go to the gym. And obviously I have to keep the weight down. So I'm, you know, I must have train myself um, and eventually I'd, I'd done it pretty well, yeah. You did it more than, more than pretty well. You passed with flying colours, as I said, and, <laughs> and then you, you made the move and you, you, you came to England. How were those first few weeks speaking no English at Luca Kumani's? Uh, it, was, it was hard. Yeah, I couldn't talk to anyone. Um, it wasn't easy. It was hard try to learn quickly. But after I came out of the racing school, you know, it helped me a lot because there was only English people. So I, you know, I was, my mind was set already kind of English. And so when I came out, I can catch some words and connect them together and, and guess what it was. But yeah, it definitely was hard. Did you make friends? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't talk to them, but we had a good fun, yeah. Mm. And, and did, that, did that help? Did that social element help you? If you're someone who's naturally quite outgoing and get on with people like you obviously do. Yeah. It was, you know, it was good. But obviously I can understand everything they said. But if I knew two words on the sentence, I, I can catch it, what they were saying, you know. Um, it, was, look, it was a kind of game. Was try it? to try to understand what they say. <laughs> well, I think every every game that you put yourself in, you you seem to have got plenty out of it. Um, at that time, how much were you thinking about a career? How much were you thinking about being a jockey, or was it just a case of survival? I wanted to be a jockey, and but I didn't expect to go. You know, good always going now, and therefore I, I could get up here. So. Was there an obvious turning point? Was there a moment where you thought, oh, this, this could actually work out really well? No, just when, you know, when I started riding for Stuart and working for him, just gave me lots of chance and, you know, I started going up, up, up. And then obviously real world came around and, you know, it, it took me on really high and it's been great, yeah. I'll come to real world in a minute because he's, he's the horse that's really put you on the map this season. But I do want to talk a lot about Stuart Williams because yeah. he's talked very warmly about you. You obviously have a fantastic relationship. Yeah, we do. How has that worked? Um, obviously, so I did the 100% on the fitness test at the racing school and he had a horse, Luna Date, running in an apprentice race. And he said, oh, do you want to ride him? But you had to come and ride him out. So yeah, no problem. So I went there and and I rode him out and he did a run on that race, he ran the week after and I did a complete disaster. So I thought, oh, I'm never going to ride for him again. And then when Luca announced he was retiring, he just 
sent me a message and said, do you want to come and work for me? And I said, yeah. And that's how we start. Why was it a disaster the first time? Well, I fly leap out the gate and then I was at the back. And then I just got stuck between all the horses and I finished fifth with half a length. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, it just gave me, you know, lots of opportunity and it teach me a lot. It gave me lots of horse to ride. Um, we watched the race every time after afterwards. Um, yeah. He must have seen something in you that he that he liked and, and, and he admired. When you went to start working for him, did you immediately get on extremely well? No. No, he always you know, because I think he likes me. So, you know, he tried to you know, to make me improve more and more all the time. And obviously if I do something wrong he he's gonna be, you know, telling me off. Um, and that'd be for the last two years. <laughs> so he's he's hard, but he's hard, fair. but he can be a uh, you know uh, how you say it. He's a nice person, but it's really hard to to get along with him. So if you, you are a hot person, you're definitely gonna have an argument with him. And would you describe yourself as a hot person or not? No, no. I didn't leave. Just so. chill. <laughs> you're, you're just always pretty. You're always chill, pretty level. Yeah. Always pretty chilled. Yeah. And and he's someone who has spoken very warmly about you, um, and has heaped praise on you for what you've achieved this season. How much does that mean to you to hear his to hear his approval? Uh, mean a lot. You know, I'm really thankful to him. If it wasn't for him, it probably would be. I don't know where I would be, but you know. He, Gave me my first win and and all the others. You know, he teach me a lot. He sent me out to America to Brandon Walsh, you know, to get some some more experience. And then I came back and uh, I lost my claim. And now he still gave me lots of rides. So you know, really thankful for him. Tell me about your time with with Brandon Walsh. Brandon's making a huge <laughs> name for himself in in the United States now, training multiple graded stakes winners. What did he teach you? I was doing definitely the working with the times and we had the beeper on the ears and you know he's be saying oh do one or one or two of a six final and then you, know, you need to try to catch it right. Um and then obviously there are different horses and different track to ride. Um yeah. I think I learned quite a lot. And learned a lot about speed about and time. speed and Try to control the keen horses and how to ride on like all weather track. I think that helped a lot. Because we used to go every morning on the on the sand track over there um, and just go for out and you know, try to do the time right. Now I'm I'm particularly thrilled this morning that it's not just you with us here on the Luck on Sunday um, set because. You know, backstage is your mum, your dad, your sister, and your partner Brooke, and your little boy Louis as well. So the whole family's here yeah. uh, with you today, and I, I know that means a lot to you, particularly because for the business end of two years, you couldn't really see. No, I actually saw them two, three weeks ago when they came for the first time, and now they came back for the Champions Day for yesterday. Yeah, so in two years I just saw them a few times. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good, you know. Probably, I missed them, but you know, obviously, thank God we got the phone so we can call each other. Yeah, but it's been a long time before I saw them. Um, and and how long are how long are they over this time? Just a week. Yeah, they need to go back to work. But a but a very special week. Yeah. They're really happy and proud and I think they enjoyed the day yesterday. And I know somebody else who has enjoyed your, your run of success is, is Michael Hills, your, yep. your jockey coach. Tell me a little about what he's done for you and, and how he's helped you. you know, when I start, you know, we go on the simulator and you know, we train to be more like race fit. 
like uh, it's different. Just go on the gym and then you go on the simulator. It's quite hard, but you know, you teach me like how to try to hold them in the race and how to push them and how to be you know stylish. Um, we watch the race together as well, and when I get banned, we watch it again and try to correct so I don't get banned again. He's been great. And um, I think we can say good morning to him now by the, the wonders of modern-ish technology. Michael Hills, good morning. Morning, Nick. Um, Marco. How, how, Hello, Mike. How proud are you of the man on my right, Michael? Very, very proud. Um, he's worked extremely hard and been very dedicated. He's always wanted to be successful, and he's improved basically from the day he came to me Stuart Williams has been amazing for him, uh, supported him, given him strong advice. He used to come in and watch him ride on the exercises to start with. And then once he started riding winners, you know, he sort of just left the style bit to me. And uh, Michael just kept improving. Um, how is that different from from most of the jockeys that you, you work with? Is he is he different in terms of mindset? Well, Michael's very, extremely fit. And he was to start with, as he got his 100% in, uh, you know, when he passed his uh, apprentice license. Um, but, you know, you've got to want it, Nick. Uh, and he wanted it. Um, you know, you can give people advice and tell them how to do it and what, what you used to do in races before and how to ride tactically. But if you don't take it on board and learn and put it into practice, it's no good. And just watching Marco through the through the course of this season, how have you noticed things kind of sharpening up and and getting getting better and better all the time? Well, Marco was in, in a battle in the winter for being for uh, all weather apprentice champion, and um, I thought it really did him a lot of good because he could feel them snap at his heels. Uh, Laura Pierce, she was very close to beating him, and he started to get make some some mistakes. He got some suspensions. We got back into the training room. We went through all the films and we just dined out a few little problems. And it sort of, he, he turned his game then and he became more professional. Obviously, he uh, rode a lot better. He became champion apprentice and it lifted him. You know, it's a bit like riding good horses. Uh, it, it lifted him into another level. And uh, he rode, I thought he rode fantastic all summer. And to see him yesterday, Michael, picking up that trophy from, from Leicester Pigger, I, I imagine that nearly brought a tear to your eye, didn't it? It was, yeah, I, I, luckily I did Kieran Farron twice and uh, Stefano Churchy, he was third. So I've had a pretty good run this year, but I was very proud, very proud of him and him. He's missed his family a lot and they were all there and it was a big day. And they're, they're all here today. Michael, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, Marco, have you got anything you want to say to, to Michael? Just thank you very much for everything. Mike, thanks so much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Well done, um, mate. Michael Hills. And it, just the importance of having just a, someone to throw everything at when you've had a bad day and to help you through the, the good and bad times must be so important. Yeah, definitely. Is, you know... When you get a bad day and you get home and you know, you're sad and you think, oh, I've probably done this wrong and that. And then you try, you know, and I call Mike and I say, oh, I think I did this and, and that. Sometimes, Robert, sometimes he'd be saying, no, it was something else, you know. So, yeah, he helped me quite a lot. But it sounds like you don't have too many bad days. And of course, now you've got your, your hands full because I've met your gorgeous little boy, uh, Louis, as well, who um, came as a a, a bit of a surprise to you, but a beautiful yeah. one. Yeah, no, it, he's so good. Being in the hospital for three days, um, missed few rides, but I don't regret it. And how has he changed your life already? I definitely keep me on the on the right road to follow. You know, <laughs> could be easy, you know, to take a wrong exit and mess everything up but you know it just kept me straight and and focus and and to get better well you're definitely on the right path it's been a, an absolute pleasure being able to chat to you this morning marco what are your ambitions for the for the winter and, and through into next year I, would, I will try to you know keep the, the ball rolling and 
and I will try, you know, try as many winners as I can and try to get another group race winner, hopefully. Well, fingers crossed it'll come. I'm hoping very much it'll be on real world. We don't know where, we don't know when. Are you going to Dubai at all this, this time or not? I don't know yet. Just take we'll, it as it comes? Yeah, take as it comes. All right, well, been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week with your family. Many congratulations Thank again. you very much.